Now you knew I'd eventually show up here to talk about this. I don't consider myself a new source, so I don't have to come at this from a place of trying to give you up-to-date information. I wait until I know for sure how I want to approach this. And I'm going to talk specifically to the deconstructing crowd. So if that's not you, this might not be relevant for you. But here's what I know. I could almost guarantee, if I was a betting person, I would bet on this that you have done no deconstructing around the situation regarding Palestine and Israel. Because I can tell you from my own experience, this is a lot of work. And so today will be the first video of a few where we'll talk about this. But what we're going to concentrate on today is Christian Zionism. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to have very high boundaries about how we approach this. So anybody who comes in here to attack me that I'm not pro-Palestinian or I'm not pro-Israel, I will block you because I have to have deep moats and high walls to protect people who have never had a chance to look at this situation outside of the deconstructed lens of their indoctrinated beliefs. And their indoctrinated beliefs are more than likely entrenched in Christian Zionism. Now, let me give you an example, and I cannot believe I'm doing this, but here we go. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching onward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Why do you think we sang a song like that? It's not because we loved the Jews. Okay, I'll stop, but... How many of you have heard of that song? What do you think Zion is? It's Jerusalem. Why are we marching there? Why are we using language that is intended to invoke this militant approach to what we're doing? Because we're conquering the land that we believe is ultimately Christians. So when I tell you that Christian support for Israel is often rooted in anti-Semitism, it absolutely is. Because Christian Zionism is this theological and even a political movement that says Israel must be occupied by the Jewish people because that fulfills Bible prophecy. And that is a condition that must be met before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, based on this theological belief, if Christians move into this land, what's going to happen to the Jews and the Muslims that live there? If they have not converted to Christianity, their demise is certain. Now, obviously, I'm glossing over a lot of this. I don't have time to preach a sermon here on this app. But if you want to learn more, this is an excellent article at jewishvirtuallibrary.org. But basically what the belief is, is that only Christians will be left to reign with Jesus on earth for a thousand years. Now, like I said, you may not even be aware of how much you are indoctrinated into supersessionism or replacement theology, but this is your time to begin to deconstruct from it. It's not enough to just walk away from church and say you reject it because more than likely you are still holding biases and prejudices that are impacting the way you are seeing the world right now. And for those of you who don't know, replacement theology simply means that Christianity replaces all of God's covenants and promises that God made to Israel is now given to Christianity. Now, nowhere in this video did I say that you cannot be sympathetic towards the Jewish people. I am not saying anything that's anti-Semitic. But until you stop seeing this through your biases and prejudices of your indoctrinated beliefs, you will not allow a seat at your table of humanity for everything, everyone that's involved in everything that is going on. Unless you're an expert on any of this, the most important thing you can do right now is deconstruct from this theology. All you gotta do is put in the Google search, Christian support of Israel is about end times prophecy. And I'm also thinking about going live this weekend so we can talk more 
about this. Drop your questions below. And like I said, anybody who comes in here to, to make any more comments about this, I am talking to people who don't even know where to turn to when it comes to the questions and are confused about what they believe and where to turn to for reliable sources. Deconstruct from replacement theology is the first step. I hope this helps.